So let's have a look at calendaring in the Colab web client. We're logging in as Alice and we're heading straight over to the calendaring section. We see Alice's calendars and we see a set of events. We also see she has the birthday calendar active and on Thursday it'll be Dave's birthday. But today we're not looking for Dave, we're looking for Bob. And so we open the quick search and we look for Bob. We find Bob in the system. We even find that the system shows us Bob has shared his calendars with us so we can see the details of these calendars. We take a quick view at his calendar as he would see it himself and see he has a couple of events in there, which in fact, if we just select him now as a user, we can add to our own view so we can merge our views. But um, of course, that's not the normal case because very often the users will not share their calendars amongst each other across all users. So let's pretend we can't actually see his calendars and want to schedule a meeting with him. We uh, enter some summary, location, description information. And of course, um, let's make this a little bit longer. So say we need a two hour meeting and we now want to add Bob to our participants. So we add Bob and we see, uh oh, he's not available at that time. So we open the find availability dialog and we see that our times match up rather poorly and we're either available or busy at different times. Same for Thursday. The first slot we see like this is Friday morning, but of course the system can also offer us automatically a slot. And we see if we take the very early morning on Wednesday, we could actually choose that slot and it's even within business hours. Um, we can also make the automatic search limited to those business hours, of course. So we, let's take that slot. We don't want to wait forever. And also, since we have now have both of us available, we also still need a room. So we go over to the resource dialog and we select room one, which we find is completely available that week. That serves us just fine. So let's book that resource. We add it to our event and here you see it's available and we save it. And now the event is saved in the calendar and it is also sent by email to both the room and Bob. Let's have a quick look over how Bob gets that invite. So here we see the invitation from Alice to Bob in Bob's inbox. And we see that Bob can now accept this and choose multiple calendars to save the event into. Let's just put it in the default calendar. And now it is saved. The response has been sent. So Alice should now know that Bob is planning to attend, even though it is a little bit early for him. Here we see Bob's calendar, which we already know out of the early quick view. And here we see the meeting scheduled as we would expect. We also see in the folder list that Bob in fact has Alice among his you know, standard users, the favorites to look into regularly. And the quick view shows us here Alice's calendar. And we even see in the lower right on Sunday, um, a gray slot. That is an event that Alice has put into a calendar she has not shared with us. So we actually add to the quick view the free busy information in order to cre create the most complete view for any individual user in the system. And if we don't have anything shared, then in fact, um, we will only see the free busy information in that quick view. So we have now recorded both the um, room have responded positively as well as Bob. So we now see in our meeting that in fact, we have all the various participants with status accepted. Um, we can, of course, re-merge the views. And here we see again that in fact, it's all looking as we would expect. And that's all for now.